So welcome everybody. We're so glad that you joined us. We are going to talk a little bit today about manufacturing and um, hopefully you'll learn something new and exciting. We are lucky enough to have Stacy Griffith join us from Han HNI in Muscatine, Iowa. And I'm gonna read you a little bit of her bio and then we have a quick video that I'm gonna play you that shows you a little bit about um, what she does and what they do. And then we have some questions we'll ask. We also encourage each of you, if you have a question, you can type it into the chat if you want to, or you can always raise your hand and we can stop and get your questions answered. Um, one thing that I would encourage you is to not wait until the end to say what your questions are because you might forget what they are. And um, we wanna be sure and get those answered because this is for you, okay? So again, welcome. And I'm gonna turn away here so I can read and we'll be on our way, okay? So Stacy functions as the talent acquisition specialist in the leveraged furniture operations group of HNI Corporation. She has been with HNI for six years. Um, let's see, her area of focus with HNI is in recruitment of external candidates for salaried positions, mainly in the areas of supply chain, manufacturing leadership, and finance, as well as human resources, as it relates to manufacturing operations. Typically, the roles she recruits for range from early career salaried. Salaried means you don't necessarily get paid by the hour, you just get paid by the year, which yep. is kind of a misnomer. We can go into that a little bit more if you wanna know more about that. Sure. And then all the way up to mid or senior level leadership. She also assists with their campus interview process as directed by uh, Mandy Parchert, who is the Workforce Development Business Partner. Stacy graduated from Illinois State University with a bachelor's degree in marketing, and her career prior to HNI was mostly in sales and staffing, and that included several, several years in direct placement recruiter, or aka also known as a headhunter, okay? All right, so I have a quick video that we're gonna uh, play for you as soon as I get all the share screens done here. Can you see my, can you see it, the video? Okay, here we go. One of the key elements that really sets HNI apart is, is the way we view development. And, and it's finding members who have this culture alignment and then giving them perspective. And so in my 25 years, I've actually had 22 different roles in multiple locations and being able to understand and see all the different functional parts of the business have been, have been fantastic. I think people typically think that they've got to move up to develop, but really there's the, the organization is, you know, you've got operations, supply chain, you know, product development. So there's all kinds of opportunities to move lateral to continue to develop yourself. That member owner culture means that I can treat H&I like it was my own business. Um, I and others, we have authorization to go out and try new ideas. So we do have freedom to fail. We want to fail faster. We want to learn from that um, if we do fail and then try something else. We intentionally go out and look for members who are great problem solvers, who have this service mentality. And then we put this set of tools that we call rapid continuous improvement wrapped around that. And it really creates this very intense focus around driving improvement and solving problems and always reaching for the next step or the next thing beyond. I think it's very valuable to continue to hire from outside our four walls, bring in fresh ideas, different experiences. But I also think that there's a great opportunity within an operations guy going to the supply chain or product development just brings a different experience to the table. Starting out as a temp in 1997 and working my way through the organization and into the role that I'm at now, I feel that growth is, is something that the company values very much so as far as internally. I think that as long as you're willing to perform and, and show that you have the ability to learn, then the sky's the limit here. You don't want to stand still. You always want to find a better way. And member owner culture means that you have the authorization and the obligation to do that. The way we respond to, uh, to to things that crop up every day is one of the things I really appreciate about about our organization. There 
we go. We're back. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, Stacy, do you want to start off by giving us a quick overview or do you want to go right into the questions? Well, you know what? I could go either way. I mean, I have like a, you know, a laundry list here of things I could talk about, but I definitely want to know what's going to be of most interest to these gentlemen here. Um, and if they have any specific questions, we can we can find out what that is and, and kind of address them as we go. I guess I'm curious if, if any of these these guys have heard of h &I Corporation before. I'm not sure how close Bell Bellevue is to, to us. So Bellevue is pretty far north in our, it's up okay. by, clear up by Dubuque. That might give you a better- Oh, okay, okay. They're, they're fairly close to Dubuque, so. Okay. That makes sense then. Then I would not expect that they probably would be really familiar with H&I Corporation um, or even like some of our more commonly known brands, which are like Han and All Steel, um, which is in a lot of ways for someone who lives relatively close to Muscatine or the Quad Cities is what they actually are more familiar with than actually H&I Corporation. Um, but, Why don't uh, you go ahead and give us okay. the pieces that you've put together to give us and okay. then if the gentlemen come up with questions, like I said, they can raise their hand, they can um, uh, unmute themselves, ask the question. We really appreciate you guys having your camera on. That's really awesome. Yeah, and then I'm gonna kind of turn this over to Dustin after you give your the pieces that you wanna quickly cover okay. and then okay. Dustin can fill in with some questions. So okay. I would say so right too, ahead, real, so just real quick. Um, Go ahead, Dustin. I always tell the students that I work with that that when you have someone in front of you that you're interested in that position, really pick their brain and, and ask those questions because they're going to be the ones that are really going to be able to tell you about, you know, whatever field you're interested in, um, in particular here manufacturing. Uh, but, you, but you're going to learn the most by talking to individuals, even if like you're just at home and you want to talk to, you know, mom, dad, someone that you know, you really learn most from, from the people that are actually living that job and the day in and day out of, of that job. So, just kind of be thinking about some of those questions as Stacy goes on and you know if not we'll, we'll have some questions here too but uh, um, this is beneficial just to be able to have someone in front of you that that, that knows the job and knows the manufacturing portion so yeah. I'll let Stacy go ahead and talk a little bit. Thanks Dustin that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah you know it's kind of interesting because um, manufacturing like jobs in manufacturing can mean so many different things um, and you know you heard in my bio I've been with H&I Corporation for six years, um, 10 years prior to that, I had worked for a staffing company. If you're probably not familiar with the Deco Staffing, it's actually the world's largest staffing company, but I was with them for a while. And my career has long been in um, sales and staffing of some level. Um, and when I moved to H&I Corporation, I, um, you know, I'm not originally from the Quad Cities, but I've lived in the Quad Cities for well over 25 years now. And I had certainly heard of a couple of our brands like Han and All Steel, but I had not really, I was not really familiar with H&I Corporation. And before I worked there, I really had no reason to go to Muscatine. Um, but when I started working there, it was really, it's the first manufacturer I've ever worked for. And it really opened my eyes to how many careers really there can be in manufacturing. And that can be something really hands-on manufacturing right there on a plant floor. It can be in a different job category that's work that's you know tied to a manufacturing operation. Um, there's a lot of different ways to be in manufacturing, um, whether you want that really hands-on experience or if you want to be in something that is more like finance for a manufacturer, which is also really interesting, or HR or supply chain. There are so many different ways to go and I can talk through any of those. And if there's a particular um, career field that you, any of you are specifically interested, please don't be afraid to let me know because I can put more energy or time into that particular area and give you some guidance um, on what those careers look like and how to get into them, um, particularly with someplace like H&I Corporation. Um, we are headquartered in Muscatine, Iowa. Um, and I'm gonna guess that you are somewhat familiar with that, where that is. It's probably a good hour and a half south of where you live. Um, I commute in from Davenport, Iowa. And um, in Muscatine, you know, a lot of people commute to their jobs, particularly salaried members. Um, and like what T Tishley was saying and, and you know, kind of di the differentiator between salaried and hourly positions is really just kind of the, the structure of how their compensation is. Um, and sometimes it, an indicator of the level of position and, and the area of specialty. Um, 
But anyway, with um, headquartered in Muscatine, H&I Corporation operates basically in two different industries. We're best known as an office furniture manufacturer, and that's actually where 75% of H&I's business is. Um, we also operate in the industry of hearth manufacturing, um, which is the manufacturing of fireplaces and wood burning and gas burning stoves and um, all things along those product lines. I'm honestly not as familiar with those that side of the business because it's not part of what I recruit for, but it's still um, it, it, a really big part of the overall organization's business. We actually, as H&I overall, 75% of our business is in workplace furnishings and the other 75% is in the hearth manufacturing. What's kind of interesting in, in, the, in that, in that um, kind of division is that on the office furniture side, um, we rank typically somewhere in the top four to five in the country against other um, like American manufacturers of office furniture. Um, but on the hearth side, um, we actually are number one in, in the country and possibly the world with our, with our hearth products because we somehow have managed to acquire so many different brands in the fireplace industry that we have more market share than all of our competitors combined. So even while it's a much smaller portion of our business overall, it's actually where we have the most market share. And the um, Hearth and Home Technologies, which is the main headquarter kind of parent company over all of the brands in the fireplace side is up in um, Lakeville, Minnesota. Um, but anyway, in within Muscatine, two of our office furniture brands that maybe you've heard of, one of them is called Han, um, it's spelled H-O-N, and that's actually kind of that homegrown brand for H&I Corporation. It's the one that actually started in Muscatine um, back in, I want to say the 1940s, um, and over the many decades has grown into what now is H&I Corporation. Um, along the way, there have been many acquisitions of other office furniture manufacturers. So we do have more brands than most people even local here even realize. Um, another brand we have is called All Steel and that is actually also headquartered in Muscatine. Um, but we have another brand called Gunlock that's located in New York. We have two different brands in North Carolina. Um, we have a facility in Cedartown, Georgia, which is kind of close to Atlanta, not right there, but um, close enough. And then we have distribution facilities all over the country. So really our scope is much larger than most people realize. We have operations in China and India as well. Um, and then from a supply chain expert, of course, we have suppliers and vendors all over the world. Um, that makes us the fourth largest employer in the state of Iowa. Um, and in terms of our members, which is basically our code for employees, we call ourselves members, um, within h and Corporation, there's probably 10,000 or so overall, um, with a good 4,000 of us in Muscatine. So really, Muscatine is where the hub of our business is, um, but then with a lot of um, career opportunities with other brands throughout the country and the world. So if you kind of are one of the, if you, if you ever set your sights on a company that is larger, um, but still within the state of Iowa, um, H&I is a great consideration. You know, from a recruitment standpoint, those were often competing with or other large companies around here. I'm sure you've heard of John Deere, um, Cobham, um, Alcoa. These are all companies that we, we common trade, commonly trade people with, uh, whether that's good or bad. Um, but just from, you know, if, if you're ever looking for a larger employer, um, H&I is a great consideration in that way. However, we also are kind of, we, there's a very family feel to the company. So in terms of just the vibe, um, people are still very close. People work, you know, there's large teams, there's small teams. Um, there's a lot of different dynamics available within the organization. Um, but uh, I'm th you know, just thinking in terms of the, the priorities for the organization, some of the things that are really number one on the list, and this is not just for H&I, but companies everywhere. Um, one of the number one things that we are really focused on right now is diversity and inclusion and equity. Um, and with that, we have a new um, kind of branding initiative. It's called H&I Belong. And it's within this um, program and initiative that we're really, really focused on making sure that we are um, being as diverse as possible whether that's you know culturally diverse, racially diverse, also diverse in people's um, levels of education and their backgrounds and what 
different different genders and races and everything can bring to the table in terms of um, our business functions and being stronger and staying more competitive. Um, and with that also inclusion, which is um, really on the forefront of, of most organizations and particularly just in the, the climate of um, our country these days. It's just making sure that everyone who works here really feels that they belong here and that there's a really good place for them. So we have more and more programming being devoted to that. Um, equity, I don't know if you're first, if you're familiar with that concept, but it's that's more and more about making sure that um, or under, at really kind of understanding that things are not always as easy for one person as they might be for another. So always trying to level set and making sure that we are doing everything we can to, um, you know, make, I guess, enable our, enable our members as much as we can and give people whatever level of assistance they need that's feasible for the company in order to give them just as much of a chance as others may have. Um, Another really um, important uh, initiative that the company is, is increasingly looking at is just our corporate social responsibility, which is all about environmentalism, all about reducing emissions, keeping our environment as clean as possible. Um, within the town of Muscatine, HNI has a huge footprint. Um, and we do in other areas of the country too. So it's really critical um, to, to always be um, as environmentally conscious as we can and do everything we can to reduce waste, um, make sure our emissions are as, as I guess, minimal as they can be um, and, um, you know, using as much solar power as we can, reducing um, kilowatts per hour and a lot of these kinds of things. And I'm not the greatest at speaking to any of these things, but I do know we have, um, it, it's just, we have a large report that the company's put out and it'll be interesting in the two, year of 2021 because a lot of the goals that the company set forth are set to kind of be reevaluated in 2021. And that was back in 2018 and the way time flies, I'm sure it seemed like, oh, we've got years to figure this out. And now here we are, it's 2021. So we'll see how we're doing. Um, but um, between that and supporting our local community, these are all things that are really important to HNI Corporation. Um, if you, you know, if, if you haven't been to Muscatine, it would be interesting to see that we have we have at least, gosh, nine different plants, um, all all dedicated to manufacturing, and they are often like focused in different areas. We have one plant that's that's mainly for laminate. We have another plant that's for steel. We have you know, two or three different plants that are dedicated to manufacture of just our office chairs. We call them seating facilities, but it's S-E-A-T. -E I, whenever I say it, I think it sounds like John Deere seating, like S-E-E-D. <laughs> it's an important distinction, um, but chair manufacturing is probably one of the areas that for us is, it evolves the fastest, it changes the most because chairs are the most consumable, consumable. you know, we're a desk can last probably for at least a decade or two, chairs wear out much qu more quickly. So that's always a big focus area. Um, in terms of careers, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to see you guys with any level of interest in exploring manufacturing careers. There is such a wide gamut of careers available. I mean, and, and if you talk, you know, kind of the most readily available, you know, depending on what your plans are when you graduate from high school, whether you're going on to college or you just want to go straight into careers that, you know, a, a full-time career, there's something really available for anyone. Um, and I'm not sure if Mandy um, talked a lot about hourly careers. Um, we have an entire team of recruiters just devoted to our, the recruiting of our hourly positions. These positions are typically manufacturing production floor positions. They can be in assembly, machine operations, um, which can mean a lot of different things. Um, they can be in um, welding. Um, we do have a lot of also skilled trades positions, but on the hourly production, these jobs, you, they don't require a college degree. Um, this is something that people can start in on, you know, the, the very most entry level and work their ways way up through the organization. These jobs typically start at about 13 to $14 per hour. And the more you learn and experience you go, um, you can advance um, both of course in compensation and your level of work. 
Um, and you can advance from an hourly position into a more salaried position. Um, anything is possible. I don't know if you, I'm not sure if you caught in the video, Jason Anderson was the gentleman who um, mentioned that he started as a temp. And I, I know Jason Anderson, he has been with the company since, did he say 1997, which is, that's a good long career. <laughs> he definitely has some persistence and knows how to hang in there, but he's an operations manager now um, over our, in our Oak Steel plant. So he has, he really has built a solid career out of starting just as a temp in the organization and a lot of people can do that. Um, when we talk about salaried positions, that it, it, it's, it, it's a bigger distinction than one might realize. I mean, really most of our salaried positions do require a college degree, a four-year college degree. There's very few, um, sometimes what we, if, if someone doesn't have a college degree and they otherwise have enough experience that we would slide them into a salaried position, we probably would still encourage them to finish a four-year degree. And we do have a tuition reimbursement program that we will readily avail make available to someone um, in order to help them achieve that. Um, it's, but more and more as a recruiter, and as she mentioned my bio, I really only do salaried positions. It's very rare that we would pull someone without a college degree into a salaried position. Um, other real distinctions are, you know, with the, the, you guys don't need to get caught up in this, but within, within employment, there's, um, there are really important distinctions around someone who is in an hourly position, who is therefore entitled to overtime. And there are, you know, really, there are more um, kind of strict restrictions for, and from, on the employer as to what they um, have to pay those people for or not. Where, whereas in your room, you're in a salaried position, you're not, you're, you're kind of operating on the standard that you're working 40 hours a week, but no one, a lot of times, that's not really being counted. So um, it's, but you're also not making overtime, so <laughs> it can vary. Um, what, with, um, within the salaried side, this is where careers in um, supply chain are, is a huge part of within h and Corporation and most, most manufacturing um, companies. Engineering is a huge area for within manufacturing and um, as is um, manufacturing leadership. So roles like factory managers, plant managers, quality managers, safety managers, anything in that realm. Um, and we can go, I mean, I can go a lot of different directions in my conversation. I'm not sure if I'm talking too much now or should we stop and see if any of these gentlemen have any specific interests? I have one question and I know Dustin has a bunch of questions he can ask, but you said that typically you want a four-year degree. When mm -hmm. you're talking about that, so or people with just a couple of years of work experience. Um, but once you have that four-year degree and you're in an analyst role, then the sky's the limit. Then you can work your way into supply chain manager roles um, and, and director and upwards from there. And also within supply chain, there's a lot of opportunity to um, work in, in different areas and even just move laterally around to broaden your scope of understanding in that category. Does that answer your question, Tishley? Or at least address it enough? Okay. Had any of you gentlemen ever heard of supply chain before? You can nod. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah. It's really, it's, I think it's a, I, from what I've seen as a recruiter, it's, it's a, it's a really fantastic um, career path to take just because there is so much room for growth. There's so much to learn and there just are so many different facets of it that I, you just never get bored. There's always somewhere new, new to, to go and, and try something different. Um, another area that I recruit for a lot, as I mentioned, is in plant leadership, um, which is a broad category, meaning um, factory managers, plant managers, these are gentlemen who are, or women, anyone, I shouldn't say gentlemen, um, <laughs> that are really um, leading all of production and manufacturing. Um, they are overseeing usually hundreds of people within a plant and overseeing everything that has to do with safety, quality, production, delivery, cost. Um, and, you know, these are, these are also often individuals who are just career manufacturing individuals and um, but but high level leaders. I mean, these these are people who do very well and um, usually have started not necessarily an hourly uh, production, but have come in 
at somewhat of an entry level and works their way up. It's, um, there's, there's a lot of different ways one can go. And particularly if you find an interest specifically in quality or specifically in safety, um, those are other areas of focus areas that are, um, have a lot of potential. As you're going, if you if you go into um, if you decide to go to a, a pursue a four year degree and you get into operations or manufacturing, one thing you might have the opportunity to learn about is lean manufacturing, um, which is a, another really prevalent um, you know toolkit or practice that H and I uses, as do many other manufacturers. Um, it's very common to implement lean manufacturing practices in our plants. Um, and um, it's, it's actually really a very interesting um, just line of, of tools that, that are used in order to make sure we're the, that we're getting the most out of our manufacturing processes in terms of efficiencies and costs and everything, waste, you know, eliminating waste, things like that, process improvement. Um, Dustin, do you want me to pause and do you have specific questions or have any of, of um, the students? Because I can keep going. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions right now? I will say this, um, just to throw my two cents in here. Um, I think it's it's very so much important anymore to, to research a company and to really know what they're doing and what they're manufacturing. And yeah. I mean, Han has a very, very good reputation in the city of Muscatine in the community um, of, of just being the best. I mean, you wouldn't think that uh, you know woodworking and furniture was going to be maybe your cup of tea, but if you want to work for the best place that you know is producing good things and does have that good atmosphere, that good family environment, you know, Stacy touched on a lot of good things that that they're doing. That that's an important thing I think I tell kids is just figure out yeah. what that company is, what they're what they're based out of, and and just if they're good people to work for, because you're going to end up working for people in your life that you might not like. Yeah. Um, and, and I've heard nothing but good. And I don't work for um, Han. I work for East Iowa Iowa Community College. So, um, mm -hmm. but everything I, I hear about Han is they do great things. They, they treat their employees well, which is, I think, yeah. one of the most important things is, is treating employers well and things like that. Yeah. So it, it doesn't hurt to do some of that research and, you know, really figure out what those best things are in your community. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I, I if I was going to go into manufacturing and want to be for one of the, the people that produce one of the top, you know, items that they produce, and that's definitely Han. Uh, and, and at yeah. some point in time, and you guys might, you know, do this after the, the Zoom call, but if you look under your chair or anywhere in your school at, at desk tables or anything like that, chances are it's probably from Han. It might uh, be. And that's not because <laughs> it's local, because it's, yeah. it's you know, one of the best producers of, uh, of desk furniture, so. Yeah. Uh, that's just kind of my two cents on, in regards to, you know, going out there and working for somebody that is a competitor that is really, you know, going to challenge you and, and make you know a better person. So, mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, believe that Han has those characteristics. Yeah. So, hundred percent. I and you know, I think one of a couple of the the really nice things about H and I Corporation. I mean, I I can honestly say when I when I came to H and I Corporation, I was previously a headhunter, meaning I worked for like a third party vendor. So we would have clients who had a job opening. I would go out and find their candidate for them and we'd charge them fees. And that alone is, is not a bad job. It's, it's, it's kind of a grind. <laughs> no, nobody goes to college so they can be a recruiter. Being a recruiter is not a bad career, but <laughs> you just kind of fall into it. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, one of the things I really learned was that there are a lot of companies out there that are not great to work for. And as a recruiter, it was really hard to try to recruit someone into a company that I didn't work for, but I didn't really feel confident was going to be a great place. And when I moved to H&I, one of the things that immediately pulled me in was that I knew that these are really good job opportunities. Not every company is for everybody, but I really truly believe like as a recruiter, you have to, you have to feel good about what you're doing. You have to, because a lot of times we're pulling people out of other jobs to tell them, you know, to have them come work for us. And there really has to be a lot of integrity behind that and belief that this is the right move for that person. And um, luckily with H&I, I don't have to worry too much about that. One of the nice benefits about, particularly for if you guys generally like living in Iowa um, and we're at least on the same side of the state as you are, um, it is very easy to start and develop a career 
in Muscatine at, at h &I and just stay there. And there's a lot of opportunity for growth without ever having to leave Iowa. Um, now that may not sound great now, but a lot of people, they go to school, move away, and then they come back and they work for us um, because they decide it's, it's time to move back to Iowa. It's actually somewhat of a recruiting strategy that we use as we we can search people based on where they went to college. And if they went to college in Iowa, I think, well, maybe they'll want to come back. Um, but anyway, it's it's very nice. I mean, and just compared to some other large organizations where you may be required to relocate and with not a whole lot of choice. Um, and within Muscatine, we do have opportunities for people to relocate. You know, we're always thrilled if someone wants to go work with Gunlock in New York for a couple of years or go to HBF in North Carolina for a couple of years, but we always like can bring them back. Um, it's never a forced relocation. So if you're really kind of at some point in your life looking for long-term stability in one place and not being forced to move, H&I is a great, a great company for that. Um, but in other ways too, if you have questions, you know, I'll at the end remind me, I'll give you our website, but it's hnicorp.com. And our website is really comprehensive. It can show you all of our different brands, all of our core values, our um, you know, community initiatives and things. There's really a lot of information you can garner. So as Dustin's talking about research, going to the website is one of the best ways to do that. Besides listen to me. <laughs> so do any of you have interests or sites set on careers or just thoughts around things like in lines of finance or HR, or I'm, I'm, and I, I'm just curious because there's a lot of ways to work for a manufacturing company without working on a plant floor. Um, you know, I almost, I am almost never in a plant. Um, in, in, and I like being in them because on, on the plant floor is where you get those jobs that are super interactive, faster paced, things changing, moving all the time. Um, and that is, it's, it's, a, it's an outstanding way to work every day. But if you are, you know, more interested in a career in finance, we have a lot of careers in finance that are very closely tied to manufacturing. And these, um, these careers come in, in the form of like cost accountants, um, finance analysts, controllers, which are really doing a lot of cost analytics on how much is it going to cost to make something? Where are we getting these things? analyzing our operations all from a financial perspective. And those careers have a lot of potential too, as does human resources. We have a lot of, we have really large human resource teams in all of our plants. Um, and then at our headquarter locations too, there's just a lot of different ways to um, be in manufacturing, but not necessarily working on a machine. Not, you know, there's, there, you can go both ways depending on what your interests are. Um, but I would say, particularly in manufacturing, H and I being an office furniture, we're also probably one of the more stable organizations. We we do have some ups and downs uh, uh, with the economy, you know, obviously with coronavirus. That oh, <laughs> this one leaning in um, the uh, the you know a lot of things economically impact our business, but H and I remains very stable um, and um, very seldom has to make really, really drastic changes along as the economy goes up and down. Dustin, did you have any other questions or any of you guys have any questions or thoughts? Feel free to jump in. Um, so I guess maybe we should talk in regards to um, if any of you guys are interested in manufacturing or you know, getting a, a feel of the factory life or something like that. What, I guess the question for me, if I was 18 is, what would be the process of applying? And mm -hmm. um, I mean, do I need any extra experience? I mean, what is my chance of a getting job being 18 and just graduating as opposed to someone that might be 40 right. and worked at several uh, manufacturing yeah. has different certificates. Um, are any guys in welding or anything in regards to that right now? Welding classes at at Bellevue, or you guys at Marquette? Do you have do you have welding offered? We don't have those kind of classes. Okay. Has anybody ever tried welding or anything? Okay. All right. Isaac has. Isaac has. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. So I guess that would be my question is just kind of the steps and what my chances are and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think you guys are going to find one of the best ways to see what openings are available is always going to be just go to the company's website. Almost every company's website has a careers section um, and it hopefully be pretty easy to search, but it's really easy with H&I. Our website is it's basically hnicareers.com. Um, it's really easy. Once you go in, there's different filters you can use, search filters. Um, for someone graduating right out of high school, probably your best bet is going to be looking at our hourly production roles. These are going to be plant roles. But once you've applied, um, we have, like I said, we have a team specifically devoted to all of our hourly positions. And you would most likely be contacted by um, one of our hourly recruiters who would do a really basic phone screen with you just asking you a few really simple questions about what you've done or what you're looking for. Um, And then the interview process from there, they would probably invite you to come into the recruitment center, quick interview. Um, And if you're selected, you would be shown, you'd be given a tour of the plant. It it can kind of depend on to where they would send you. Um, At 18, right out of high school, you'd probably most likely be considered for a level one production position. Um, but this is, this is a great way to just get a taste of manufacturing. Um, it really is, um, you know, it, it's, it's safety is always a number one priority. So I think you could feel good about working in our plants. Um, but it's just a great way to see what manufacturing operations is really like um, and really feels like on a day to day basis. They're almost always full time jobs. Um, and, you know, like I said, they generally start at $13, $14 an hour. Um, the process is not difficult. We always run backgrounds. We always do drug screens. So that's, that's a part of it. Um, and, you know, in terms of getting through the interviews, really, especially for when you're graduating from high school and you may not have a lot of applicable, applicable work experience, the things that you're going to want to focus on um, in terms of just interviewing are going to be your your eye contact, your communication, how to translate kind of what you have done into how do you solve problems, how do you how do you get your keep yourself motivated and showing up every day even when you don't feel like it, how do you organize your time, things like that. Some of these like more competencies we would call them that are going to be good indicators of how well you're going to fit into the organization or into a a manufacturing role. Uh, I guess kind of on the same lines as that, can you kind of touch on being a recruiter and, you know, obviously hiring individuals to come work at Han H&I? Can you talk a little bit about how important attendance is? Oh, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, especially especially in hourly production roles, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's just a reality of a difference between hourly and and um, salaried positions. But on the on the hourly side, the attendance becomes critical. I mean, an attend I shouldn't say that it's not important when you're in a salary position. It is. It's just monitored differently. But um, particularly in hourly production positions, um, it the most critical part of it is not only just from a credibility standpoint, but the importance of the actual manufacturing operations. Manufacturing lines run on really specific timeframes. There are really specific metrics on the output that that particular plant is aiming for. um, And really everything, everyone needs to do their part in order to reach the goals or the production metrics that the team is requiring. So, um, So that's where they're really truly depending on every member to be there and work um, in these specific timeframes um, in order to reach the company's goals. So I think it's easy to think that for any given member, well, it doesn't matter if I'm not there, they'll cover for me. It really is important. Every single member is critically important to the operation. Um, And in terms of just logistically how it's measured, it's also there's a point system you're operating on. And so um, you have a certain number of points that you can use for absentees and once you're out, then you run out and you potentially are then jeopardizing your position. So um, it's not, it's, 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 I I would say it's quite a bit different in school. Um, I have a daughter that's in eighth grade and I'm, I mean, back when I was in school, I don't know about you, Dustin or Tishley, but we were never allowed to turn things in late. Like (laughs) it was, 
if you missed it, you missed it. But now there's a lot more allowances. I notice, you know, we're, we're getting emails like, Hey, she didn't turn in this assignment that was due five weeks ago. Um, you know, and they still want to see it. It's, it's way different with work. <laughs> once, once you've missed it, you've missed it. And, um, you know, there's, it's, it's really important that you're, you know, from an attendance perspective that you're there, you're on time because every, every, every minute you can be dinged for, for not being on time. But it's really, it's not, it's not a system that's meant to be punishing. It's just really because production is critical. And that's one of the key differences between in manufacturing, working within the actual production or, or manufacturing operations versus being in more of a support role in um, supply chain, finance, HR, where, um, you know, there's nothing like the actual manufacturing that is so critical to the, the production, the, you know, the success of the business. Does that answer enough the question around attendance? And Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much touched on how important it is. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's based on the success of a company too. If there was this leniency on coming in late and not showing mm -hmm. up for your scheduled shift or talking to the, your employees about how your previous shift went, things, things won't be successful. So that's why those things are yeah. put in place and we have consequences if we're not gonna mm -hmm. you know, be a part of that, so. Absolutely. One of the, real, one of the core values that H&I always carries is just responsibility. Um, and that is, that is something that whether you are in the plant floor or in a support role or hourly or salaried, everyone has to have a strong sense of responsibility for what they're doing and for everyone around them. And, and that's, that's really where attendance plays in. It's more than just attendance itself and it's more than just you, it's your sense of responsibility for, the, for everyone around you and the, in the entire operation. So it looks to me like class is over and you gentlemen have been very respectful and stayed Aww. and not gotten. <laughs> Because I saw others get up and leave. So I, oh, I, thank I you for that. we're probably out of time for you all, right? Okay. So gentlemen, thank you so much for being respectful and staying. It says a lot about your character. We expect, we appreciate that. So thanks for staying. Okay. If you have any questions, reach out to Heather Evans, who comes up and visits you, and she can make sure and get you some contact information if you want it. Stacy, thank you so much for your time. We oh, really you're welcome. Gentlemen, you can go. You don't have to wait for me to stop talking. So thanks so much for staying and uh, um, yeah. being respectful of that. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you listening to me. All right, thank you. <laughs> have a good day. All right. That it was. Thanks, Isaac. There he goes. That was, I saw some girls get up and leave behind them. So I thought, oh, I, bet, yeah. I, bet I wasn't even noticing. So I'm glad you, well, you were talking, concentrating yeah. on what you were saying. So yeah, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. It's fun. I love talking. To, I like, I, I, so I don't very often get to work with much younger people. So I love it. They remind me of my own kids. <laughs> yeah. They were a good group, good group of kids. So yeah, they were Yeah, awesome. good. Well, please tell Mandy, thank you for I will. reaching out to you and getting you to us. Um, we yeah, really no problem. It. Um, and again, if I'm ever doing it again and you want me to do it differently, just let me, let us know. No, what you did was great. Good. It's thank tough you. doing it on this virtual stuff. I mean, if you're in person, they're more engaged and they're oh, going 